under President George W. Bush, VA's budget was insufficient to provide assistance to Gulf War veterans, Vietnam War veterans, Iraq War veterans, and Afghanistan War veterans. And that's a national disgrace. Despite heavy funding from the federal government and reforming the Veterans Affairs Department through numerous programs, recent study reports show thousands of troops are returning from the wars with depression, mental illness, emotional anxiety, and mysterious ailments. In fact, estimates show out of the 1.7 million troops deployed in war zones, one in four return home with PTSD or some form of brain damage. A recent study conducted by a congressionally mandated panel of scientists and veterans found the Gulf War syndrome is a real illness that affects hundreds of thousands of Gulf War veterans. Don Overton, executive director of Veterans of Modern Warfare, has been living with Gulf War illnesses and worked on the research advisory committee. And that for 17 years, veterans have been denied benefits, denied access to health care for these conditions, and quite frankly, just referred to psychiatric care as a psychological condition. Well, now it finally is proven that that's not the case. Unfortunately, uh, Secretary of Veterans Affairs has now asked the Institute of Medicine, IOM, to study the study. Paul Sullivan of Veterans for Common Sense says there is a lot of disturbing information the general public does not know about what the Department of Defense and Veterans Affairs has been concealing. Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans are returning home with unusual symptoms from their service in Iraq and Afghanistan. The public doesn't know that the military has these enormous burn pits where paints and solvents and batteries are burned and the toxic smoke is wafting over, blowing over tens of thousands of American soldiers in Iraq right now as we speak. Most Americans don't know that our soldiers are still being given an experimental anthrax vaccine. Most Americans don't know that our soldiers were ordered to take an experimental larium pill, and many of them had psychological side effects that were not good. Some of the service members who took that larium pill committed suicide. So yes, the continuing legacy of the toxic poisoning of our soldiers while they serve overseas continues today. According to other study reports, depleted uranium, a form of toxic waste laminated on weapons used in the war, is also one of the major reasons men and women from both Gulf Wars are experiencing serious health problems. In its findings, the Research Advisory Committee concluded Congress should award $60 million to investigating and finding a cure to the Gulf War syndrome, which is now labeled as an undiagnosed illness. Many in the veteran community say finding a cure to the Gulf War syndrome will help better the lives of over 200,000 veterans from the first Gulf War who are affected and possibly many more from the current ongoing wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Jahan Hafiz, Press TV, Washington.